I'm Frederick Van Johnson. I'm here in the Sony booth at NAB 2014, standing here with Michael DeRose. He's a, he's a guy that knows a little bit more about these cameras than I do, and we're going to dive in. But first, before we do that, Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, so what do you, what do, you do for Sony? What's your, what's your gig? I'm a sales support engineer. Uh, my job is pre-sales, post-sales uh, as uh, an evangelist of our products, but also I, I, I'm more of an educator. I like to get out and work with the, the field and uh, just show them what, what our things can do, but also make sure that they're comfortable going down that space. So I like to kind of walk them through the process so that if they do buy our stuff, now i got a bit of a relationship with them. They know that they can call me, uh, work out whatever issues they might have, and just, quite frankly, keep them happy as a customer of Sony. That's cool. Okay, so let's let's talk about some of these cameras that we have back here. So I was telling you off camera a little bit that the This Week in Photo audience, we're mostly still photographers, right? But as you know, the movement has been into motion and video. As cameras get more and more capable, photographers are finding themselves up against the gun with clients saying, hey, I want video now. So looking at these, these are, from a still photographer standpoint, these are a little intimidating. So what do you, how do you start? Well, clearly from the size. I mean, who's not going to be intimidated by a camera like that? It's massive, <laughs> right? But, but the reality is that when you're looking to go down the space, going from still to video, the, the, the file capacities is something that can really jump up and bite you quickly because stills, okay, I'm shooting JPEGs, I go to RAW, there's a big jump there. And I have a lot more flexibility of that, but when I go to these guys, the whole value of the NX cam line is really to be efficient. So we're taking HD resolution content and squishing it down to a very manageable file size. In fact, the, the high resolution details of these and the highest data rate is Actually, more in the, the it's more in the kind of uh, DV level. It's it's around 24 to 28 megabit, and these a lot of these cameras can do 1080 60p, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah. And what I like, and what I do when I'm shooting with these camera formats, in fact, the camera that's shooting this interview is the FS 700. Yeah. And what I really like about that is that we can actually take the files from there and copy them right over to PlayStation 3. I mean, I know I'm pimping the same stuff in the camper, yeah, but it's it's that. it's a three hundred dollar media server the way I use it, and I camera I, I travel with that camera and the P PS3 everywhere I go, and I can just copy the files over. Now I have a wireless controllable HDMI output playout source to demo content. Say, hey, I've shot the stuff that's high frame right here, or I can take any of these cameras and copy those files over to it and use it as a way to take stills or video and play that stuff out for my, my clients. That's crazy. So you have a built-in playback mechanism. So looking at this guy here, this is the little one. As I'm looking at the rest of these, what's what's special about this particular camera and what is it? This camera is something that it, it packs a ton of punch in a small little body. So the NX30 here is is a high definition camera that has a full audio kit with XLR, which is great. This can actually come off there and just walk around in a palm sized camcorder, which is fantastic. What I really like about it is that it has a projector built in on the LCD side. And so a friend of mine, we had these uh, these products out here, and I'll I'll take you over to that section next to the the journalist backpack. Yeah. But when one of my counterparts said, "Hey Mike, how does this work?" I said, "Well, hey, your son plays football. Here's how you want to learn how this camera works." take this camera out, shoot his games, come back, and he lives in Atlanta where they have basements. I'm in California. I don't know what a basement is, although my relatives in Canada do. Um, but he can take that file out, um, take the camera down there. It has a 96 gig flash memory drive inside as well as an SD card slot so you can record to an SD card if you want or just record all day to this 90, uh, 96 gig uh, hard drive. Yeah. Um, so he takes it downstairs into his basement and then they just go into the playback mode and he just turns around, flips it and it goes wide up onto his wall and a little projector here and he's just him and his son watching the video of his football game and he's all, Mike, that's the greatest thing ever. And it's a unique in, uh, application for it but it is something that's added on. And some of our consumer cameras have their projectors built in in. But the fact that you can have the high-res audio, really great HD video quality in a palm-sized camera that has HDMI out and all the flexibility you might need, even though it's kind of small in size, it's an unbelievable camera. And I've been really impressed with it. So I'll take it out on the golf course and shoot some stuff and at trade shows and you know they have, and they have golf, cor uh, golf tournaments on it. And I'll just play it back into the thing and, and people get to see themselves. They go, wow, you were shooting that quality on this camera? But looking, looking at this with this with this small projector in there, how can that possibly put out enough light for you to see it? I mean, is it what kind of magic is going on in there? Well, that's the thing is, is it's not the brightest output for a projector, but if you're if, if you're projecting it downstairs in the basement and you have no ambient light, it's ample. Uh, in fact, at a trade show like this, all I would do is I'd get like a whiteboard and just pull it back away, and you can see it. And it's not the brightest, but if in, in, with all the ambient light, it's going to compromise that. But it does a pretty good job, and it's just a nice thing that has a slider in here, so you can adjust your focus, and you can either be projecting out or you just can be playing out on the LCD. It's it's a neat little feature that it has, but I, I've been very fond of this camera. And the nicest thing is, is for operators that are actually going from a still to a video environment, the compression scheme that we employ in the NX Cam products, which is the AVCHC, it's effectively the 
Blu-ray codec. So you can drag and drop that stuff into most of the editing systems of today. And you also can, again, as I mentioned, throw it right into a PlayStation and play it out uh, natively there. What are we looking at price-wise for something like this? This one runs uh, street price now, and, and it's around in between $2,500, $3,000. That's just off the top of my head. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I think that's in the ballpark of street price yeah. for it. But um, I do want to show you this journalist backpack that we have in another part of the booth, because I think for your audience here, those that are moving from still to video, we do all the thinking for you in this, this journalist backpack, and it includes this camera, and it's in the $5,000 range. So maybe okay. go take a look at that. Let's head over there. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, Mike. So we're here in front of this cool-looking ensemble of stuff, and you're saying it's the video journalist's backpack. What does that mean? What is it? This is something that we did all the work for you. We've taken all the thinking out of it, and what's nice is if you are transitioning from a still to video mode, this journalist backpack comes with everything. So it's the camera, it's the lighting, it's the audio, it's the, the microphones, it's the tripod, it's the stands. We even provide a tablet with some um, teleprompting software on it. Uh, the microphones, the light, everything. It's everything you would need uh, and all the different accessories, the different cables. Um, even if you're like, okay, I have a, a tripod and it has the LAN control, where this camera doesn't actually use the LAN control connector. It's not that sort of mini pin. Mm -hmm. It is something that's a little bit of a multi-control. We even have an adapter that goes from the mini from that tripod connector to the camera connector provided in there. So it's everything. And it's right in the $5,000 range depending on the camera you want. So we have multiple backpacks if you want this camera. And this is that camera we just talked out about a little bit, the NX30 mm -hmm. that has the projector in it. Um, if you want a, a full-size or a larger camera, for instance, uh, if you're getting into multimedia journalists, the MMJs, which some unions are voting in depending on the region that they might work in, uh, the XD cam uh, cameras like the PMW 200, those are popular cameras for this bag as well. So obviously the price point would change a little bit, but this is an all-in-one solution does all the thinking for you. And what's greater than that where, okay, I'm going in this mode, I gotta learn all this stuff? No, there's nothing for you to think about. We've done it for you. Okay, Mike, so uh, who is this for? I know you were talking about the, the photographer that's sort of transitioning, but what about folks like me, the podcasters that are, we're typically behind a computer with a webcam or we're shooting with a DSLR camera. Could this be the next step up in terms of production quality? Sure, it absolutely can because even though, as I mentioned earlier, the, the camera is very small, but the, the video quality and the flexibility it provides with the professional audio tools and all the wireless kits and everything being provided is great. The best part is it, it affords you to become a one-man band. You can flip the LCD screen around so you can see your own framing and do a live shot because the camera also comes with a remote control that controls your zoom, you can see your framing, you can record your triggers, you even have thumbnail marks, you can say, hey, that was a good take, good, bad take, you can apply that stuff to it. So um, in, a, in a solo operation environment, which, which many of us in this industry do, um, as well as webcam stuff, and I don't know if you guys have actually been to the, the, the YouTube space facilities and stuff, those are the kind of things where they're starting to employ these as well. But those ideas of going where, hey, I'm a content creator and I have a subscription base, I can go to these facilities that, that they're building, and this would be a tool that you might be able to find there as well. I love it. So you mentioned the different cameras. So this one is the one that we just looked at. What other configs can I get? Uh, another configuration that I'm aware of is the, um, and this is typically depending on the customer, let's say, hey, well, we want this camera, great. Well, I know that some of the kits we've done is the PMW 200, which is the replacement for the EX1, which has been wildly popular. And now the, a lot of the news companies, organizations that are allowing their typical print and photo journalists going out, now they're multimedia journalists. Their job as one-man bands is go out and get the content, cut it down, deliver it to their news stations or to some type of a web outlet or something like that. And they're, they're using the PMW 200, which is an XD cam camera recording to S by S card media. So the, the configuration is similar. It's just that the backpack is a little bit bigger, has a bigger spot because the camera is about twice the size of that, maybe even three times the size, but at a professional level. And this guy is, is available now, so I can, I can go grab it. Where, where, if I wanted to go buy this today, where would I go? The simple thing is just to do a Google search on Sony Journalist, uh, back, journalist Backpack. You can go to the sony.com slash professional website and you can see advertisements for this. We've had this out for a little over a year. Um, in certain spaces, it's been wildly popular, but uh, you know, as, as today, and there are many people are watching this that may not have known about this. Uh, it's, it is, a, uh, in my opinion, it's a great tool because the best part is all the thinking is done for you. And also through our solutions development and integration department, we'll actually work with the customers to customize a camera and backpack solution to meet their needs. So if this camera or the PMW 200 camera doesn't fit for them, uh, we'll work with them to, to find something that does. All right, Mike DeRose, thank you for taking the time. I know it's a busy show for you guys. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about that other camera. Any other things that we should be taking a look at in the booth? Ah, uh, wow. What shouldn't you be taking a look at? What you should be thinking about, though, is as you are going from stills to videos, just like you're protecting your asset 
of shooting raw, having some pliability. The big deal now, and, and the gentleman from Shutterstock Photo, just uh, the, the website, it's, 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 it's basically stock footage. Start thinking, if you're going to go out and shoot footage, the SD today is going to be HD very soon. 4K video and acquiring 4K, there's a lot of value in that. Not that your customer is going to need it right out, of way, right out of the gate, but having the flexibility in post or protecting that asset going forward. So looking 4K, and we even have some consumer options here that we've announced. The A7S has been a huge hit. It's a basically a handheld point and shoot type camera, but it has a removable lens, full raster, full frame, and can do 4K live out. That's something that is very inexpensive or cost effective, but gives you future proofing well forward into tomorrow and, and, and the, the years to come. So the idea of shooting above what you're delivering and therefore having flexibility in post to zoom in on that stuff, that's a huge benefit. So protecting your archive, putting it on the shelf, you may not even need it, but work in an HD version or work in that 4K space and deliver an HD version for now, but you'll have it at the higher quality because the Netflixes and the Hulus of the world, they're already streaming that stuff come this summer. Well, they're going to need content. All the footage sites, the stock footage, they're going to need content. The more that you can provide and, and acquire yourself, the more flexible you're going to be and your assets will have greater legs going on in the future. So that would be my feedback. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Mike. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Yep. Likewise. See you guys.